Trustee Gutz. Present. Trustee Graham is excused. Uh -huh. Trustee Colo. Present. Trustee Macy. Here. Trustee Plater. Here. Trustee Rebant. Here. <laughs> Trustee Van Beek. Here. Trustee Walton. Okay. And Trustee Woodward is here. Okay, next on the agenda is public comments. Um, it's my understanding that there is not public comment to play. I already have a question. Yes. Does anyone know how I record? Like, do I say that we're appearing on a Zoom? Does anyone know? I didn't look it up. Oh, for the minutes? Yeah. Do you know, Carol? In the minutes, I would list it as a remote meeting being live streamed on WROK. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, next we have announcements, communications. Does anybody have announcements or communications? Okay, uh, approval of the agenda is next. Is there a motion? I move to approve the agenda is there a second second okay um any discussion all in favor oh. of approving the agenda hi hi, hi. hi. i missed i missed you second i missed you second it was me <laughs> catherine you. Ms. catherine we'll help you melanie it's hard <laughs> it's hard like this oh and melanie you should know this um for every vote we take uh, we'll do a regular voice vote. Um, and if there are no no's, I'll say let the record reflect that this item was adopted unanimously. And then you can put that in the minutes. If there's a no, then we'll do a roll call vote um, so that the public knows who voted what, which way. Okay. Um, so all those opposed to accepting the agenda. Okay. So let the record reflect this item was adopted unanimously. All right, uh, library director's report. <clears throat> Emily sent that um, in the board packet. Are there, is there anything to add, Emily? Since it's yeah, been sure. Sent? I just wanted to update you on some things. I had mentioned that we were doing online programming. So we haven't officially launched any of that. And by online programming, I mean, we're going to have presenters come in and present through Zoom or Facebook Live in some cases. So I just wanted to update you though on some of the registration numbers. For the ESL conversation group, we have four signed up. For seed saving, we have 43. For spring beauties, we have 73. And for Bs in the D, we have 98 signed up. So these numbers are tremendous. It's just the start of it too. We're already booking a lot of different performers. Youth Services is getting in on it too. Um, we started our reading program. We just launched that today. So we're going to do a spring reading program to keep people reading during the quarantine. Um, that um, it's for all ages too. We offer something from babies through adults. And they can actually, um, when they complete the program, get entered into a raffle for a gift card. Um, I wanted to share, and let me just pull it up on my computer, some staff comments too that we received. I always like to share positive things during my director's report. So I just wanted to let you know, oh, darn it, did I lose it? Okay, well, um, sorry, just a minute. We got, we've been um, posting a lot of stuff on Facebook and the public has left some really kind comments on there. Um, this most recently, what um, was left on a picture, I did um, a photo when it was the uh, library workers appreciation day. Um, I took a, a, from one of our Zoom meetings, I just took a photo of all of us and posted it. And one of the comments on there said, some of these faces helped me when I was a new mom looking for a community in a story time and then helped my little ones find their favorites and finally graduated them to the first floor. We love, appreciate, and miss you. And then um, one of our youth, well, actually she's our teen librarian, Becca, she posted a story time video. And underneath it, someone commented and said, I just moved into Royal Oak and visited the library before I closed. Becca, you were working that day and were so helpful and friendly to my family. Glad to see you doing well. And um, Mick commented and said, thank you. I will let Becca know, be well. And she commented back and said, thank you. I didn't know her name until I saw this video. She was so very pleasant and informative. I plan to thank her at my next return trip to the library, but this allows me to thank her sooner. 
So I just wanted to share some of those really sweet comments that, that we've been getting. And then just finally, um, the other thing is, um, I wanted to address something in the support services report from Adrian is that um, she had the idea to change the name of support services to access services. I love the idea myself. I didn't know what would be involved in that though, changing an entire department's name. As far as I know, I think it's always been support services. So I just wanted to get some board feedback on if there's any sort of a process for changing the name or if, if you guys have any input on the name change. The idea behind it is that um, support services is not exactly accurate. Really what they do is they do provide access to services. So I think it's a much more apt title for them. So does anybody know what the process is? <laughs> uh, no, but I have them in my notes to check. <laughs> also, I am realizing I was very, apparently very excited to hear from Emily and jumped right to a library director's report and skipped over all kinds of things in the agenda, which we'll go back to right now. So we'll come back to that in a second. So sorry, you guys. This is what I get for having screens and papers in front of me. Okay. Uh, we're going to go back to the acceptance of the minutes, item five. Sorry, team. Um, we have actually two sets to accept. One is our original February 25th meeting minutes, and then the other is the March 13th um, emergency meeting minutes, which were include both were included in your board packet. Is there a motion? Motions to accept the February minutes. Roxanne will second. Okay, discussion. I don't remember the high praise for Macy on taking over the pain of being secretary, but maybe I don't remember that the meeting. Oh, it happened. I remember. <laughs> Thank I you. remember that too. <laughs> okay. All in favor of accepting the February 25th minutes as presented. Aye. 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 All opposed. Okay. They are accepted. Uh, oh, uh, this motion passes unanimously. Okay. Um, March 13th minutes um, are the next set. Is there a motion? Carla motions to accept the March 13th minutes. Roxanne seconds. Thank you. Discussion? Uh, I had a correction on page seven. Uh, it was section 6A. It says that the library had closed on April 13th, but it was March 13th. I praise for Macy. Sorry. <laughs> Any other corrections? Um, I don't have a correction, but I have a question. Emily, do I, I mean, I have the Google Doc for that. Do you want me to go change it in this or do you have it somewhere else that you change it or what, what how, do, how do I fix it? I, well, I mean, I have the Google Doc, but I just fix it then there. And then do I update it online? Like where it's saved? That's what I would do. I would yeah. um, update it and then make sure what's posted on the website is the correct. Okay, any other corrections to the March 13th minutes? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? All opposed? Okay. <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. And now financial reports. Any questions from trustees regarding the financial reports? Um, I think that we spent a lot of time as a budget committee this month. So financial reports are, uh, I mean, we've been as a committee looking at them for a solid month now. Mm -hmm. Then I will move on to library director's report. We're back to, you know, <laughs> okay. where I wanted to be, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> from Emily about what's happening in the library. Um, we were just talking about the um, question about how we might go about getting access services changed. I'm wondering if that's something that the, does the policy committee handle something like that, Brandon? So um, <clears throat> I, after reading over the policies that we have and reading over the charter and the bylaws, I don't see anywhere that states that we name the departments um, or that uh, we have set names for departments. My thought would be that uh, the departments are part of the um, 
uh, the overview of the board. And this is something that we empower the director with. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, short of someone else coming up with a better explanation, I don't see any reason why, um, unless there's objection to it, that uh, we couldn't formally today even if it's a recommendation of Emily, I could see a motion being made and it passing and we could do it uh, as a board like that. Okay. So I'll formally make a motion then. Okay, I was wondering, are there any motions? Okay, and I will second. <laughs> okay, what yeah. is your motion, Brandon? Uh, to change the name of um, support services to access services. And I second that. Yes, and second it. Discussion. So this would change um, the title of Adrian's title, right? Yeah. And um, the support services uh, clerks, too, would now be access services clerks. But all their levels and positions would stay the same. Yeah. So that's another thing too, is I didn't know if I would possibly have to talk to human resources just to get an official title change on the position too. Probably seems like a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a lot of signage that would need to be changed around the library? No, no, just the name tags, which we're already gonna change anyway. Brandon. Um, I love the name change. I think it really does reflect. I mean, since I've been on this board, the word access has come up countless times in our strategic planning, our budget, and our policy making decisions. So uh, to have a department really reflect that, um, I, I think it's great. Thank you. I also appreciate the way it aligns to our new mission statement, which is what the Royal Oak Public Library provides opportunities for all to learn, connect, create, and innovate. And tied up in that is the concept of access. I think for all to learn, there's an access question. So that makes a lot of sense to me. I'd also like to comment that um, repeatedly, um, everything that Adrian is involved in, she comes with fresh ideas that are very thoughtful, and um, I really appreciate that from her. Mm -hmm. Me too. Definitely. And any other discussion about um, changing the name of from support service to access service? Like the others, I just want to say that I think it's a really good idea and so much more reflective of what the staff does. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor of changing support services department to access services department, say aye. 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 All opposed? This motion carries unanimously. Okay. Um, was there anything else you wanted to highlight in the director's report before we ask questions, Emily? Uh, no, there was not. Okay. Uh, questions from trustees about the director's report. Brandon. Uh, yeah, so Emily, um, in reading over the report, I noticed in um, a lot of the staff report that they're having issues connecting to their files and, um, and what they've left behind at the library. So I guess uh, in a handful of questions I have here is uh, how, how do we VPN into the uh, library? Um, and then it sounds like it's not set up for everyone. How is that possible to do? And then third, um, I think we need to look at technology to make this standard. And I guess we should have thought about this maybe two months ago, but if the order for new computers has been placed yet um, for staff computers that we're replacing, um, I, I think now's the time that everyone should have, you know, uh, I think a desktop computer is just a thing of the past at this point, especially for the processing that we probably all do. Um, so uh, unless you're hosting a server, I think everyone in the library can do the job on a laptop. It just makes it easier, um, especially going into meetings and whatnot. So I, I guess those three questions, if you want to try to answer any of them. Well, I think it stems from a lot of the staff don't have adequate technology. I have a couple staff members who do not have um, smartphones and they do not have computers or the internet at home. Mm -hmm. 
So that right there puts them at a huge disadvantage. I yeah. would say that having access to laptops, you know, and this is just looking ahead, if there's a possibility for a second wave of this pandemic, um, our plans are to purchase additional laptops to make sure that all the staff would have them if they need them. We may not actually need that. What I want to do is evaluate with the staff what's needed, um, because right now we do have the mobile app with eight laptops in it. And if that's adequate, that will work then. Um, but just make sure that every staff who would need some kind of internet access at home would be able to have it. Um, we've also, the staff, um, they took home a lot of the hotspots that weren't checked out because we ended, when we closed, there were only two of the hotspots checked out. So um, staff who who were having problems with, with their um, Wi-Fi, they ended up uh, taking the the hotspots and that's helped out a lot. As far as the VPN, even I'm not, I'm not connected to the VPN to access my files. I have to go into the library for that. That would have been something we'd had to set up to the city and they had their hands very full those last couple of weeks. And it was just more of a timing thing where, you know, staff left and we just didn't have the time to get that set up. Um, where Adrian and I are um, using VPN is to use Carl Connect. So we can attach to the circulation services. It's kind of limited, but then we're able to create cards. We're able to, um, uh, access people's um, accounts and help them to check out and place holds and you know check their pin numbers and things like that. Um, but I think that that's another thing too is in preparation for anything that could happen, preemptively discussing with Mike Kirby what we would need to do to make sure that we could have access to our files at home because it's got to be very difficult for staff who have not been able to come back into the building at all. It really limits them. Yeah, and you know, um, so I guess one question is: It sounds like so, Carl. That is something that's hosted on a computer at the library, correct? Like it's a program that allows you cloud access to the rest of the TLN network. Yeah, Carl Connect. Yes. Yeah, um, could and that could be installed on any computer, right? Um, I think Probably limited so. by licenses. Yeah, should so. be able to. So, uh, you know, I, I guess, and then the last part of my first set round of questions was, have we purchased the new computers yet for the staff? Yes, we have. Um, they've been quarantined right now. But Ed's so they've not in there early and setting them up. Okay. You know, I, I think there might be a discussion of, you know, should we discuss potentially with the vendor returning them since they've not been opened or seeing if they would return them and possibly purchasing laptops instead? Um, we had had that discussion and what they normally do in their day-to-day -day operations, they do need desktops for. What I was thinking is if we end up purchasing laptops for public use, which is something we've discussed, then maybe having those where the, the staff could um, take them home if need be, um, or if we purchase, purchase more for our mobile app, which is a good idea too, we could always use we can always expand out the programming that we use with the mobile lab so that these aren't just laptops for staff use, but they're, they could be multi multi-purposed and the staff could use them if need be. So I'm wondering, Emily, is this something that maybe when things settle down a bit that you and um, Ed could sit down and think through about like sort of plans A, B, C, and if there is another wave, what are the needs for technology for staff and um, how can we make sure we're prepared for that? Sure, absolutely. Okay, any other questions about the um, director's report? Okay, we're going to move on to um, uh, committee and liaison reports. Um, maybe Carla could just give a little bit of overview about what the budget committee has been up to later um, under action items. There's um, a budget approval item, but maybe just a little context now, Carla. Well, um, the budget committee has been meeting since January and we took a little break in February, I think, because we didn't have numbers from the city. Um, and then we met over Zoom um, over the last in the last few weeks and um, have really worked out details for um, the budget that we're going to propose. Uh, we got new numbers since our meeting and so we met again on Zoom yesterday to um, adjust based on the new numbers from the city and um, we have a, a balanced budget to present so. Great, thank you. 
Next, uh, facilities. Mark, would you mind um, giving a little um, bit of an update? There's a written report in the um, budget packet, but is there something you'd like to highlight? Or in the uh, board packet? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, there is a written report. If anyone has questions, I'd be glad to, uh, to try and answer them. May Does anybody have questions a, for facilities? May I give an update to the roof situation? Yes, yes please. Um, I have just heard back from the Firestone, our warranty rep, and he is planning to come out once he is able to, he's allowed to, to come and check the roof for us and see if it, any damage would be covered under the warranty. That's great news. Are there any questions for the facilities committee? Just so people know, um, adding on to what Emily said, we do have a 20 year warranty through Firestone on the roof. Uh, I think that's indicated in the report. Um, and uh, the roof was installed in 05 and uh, in the best uh, of worlds, it would be good until 2025, but it looks like that we be, we'll be lucky if that's the case. Um, the Garland Company is recommending that the roof be replaced. Um, the fire, Firestone rep did say, though, that he hopes to get at least another five years out of the roof. Good. Yeah. OK. Thank you for all your work, by the way, Facilities Committee. You guys have been so busy with so many things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. High uh, fives. I got you. I got you. That was high fives. Virtual high five. Uh, next, policy review. Um, Brandon um, submitted a report, and you also have been busy on policy review, and you're going to meet again in May. Is there anything that you'd like to highlight, or should we just move right to questions from board from board members? Yeah, just let me. Um, so Emily, I know sent out. Um, she cut off apparently she didn't like my report and cut it in half um it was long-winded i suppose uh so she sent out the rest of the uh the report this afternoon um the last paragraph really is just four bullet points i'm going to read through them really quick so everyone hears them um this summarizes our recommendations um so the library is to open uh for staff to return once the stay at home safe order has ended uh the staff um, is to return to the library for a period of time with no public in the building, no services offered to prepare to offer for future services. Um, patrons will not return to the building as of yet, um, and we will start curbside services. Um, so those were the big takeaways that we have. Um, those are our recommendations for the board at the moment. Um, we're gonna keep on looking. Uh, it's gonna be multiple more meetings. Adrian is working with her staff right now to develop policies for curbside pickup, um, as we feel that's the safest way to get public books at the moment. Are there questions for the policy review committee? Go ahead, Aaron. Do we know yet uh, what, what kind of measures we have to take to ensure that the books that are returned to us are safe to go ahead and lend out again and they're safe for the staff to touch? You know, we there's um, a CDC webinar that most libraries are referencing now, but um, it talked about paper-based products and safe measures to get our books back. They said only a 24-hour quarantine period. Now, the consensus amongst the staff is we think it should be longer. So we're thinking we would like to set stuff aside for three days and then actually wipe it down after that too. Um, but it is in a way it's kind of reassuring that really, I mean, that's coming from the CDC that you know, they said only a 24 hour period, but we're coming up with a process for, you know, having a staging area where when the books are returned, we can just place them in there and then make sure that we're organizing everything. And then when they're ready to be pulled, having them wiped down and before they're reshelved again, it'll be a process too, to get all the books back. And that's going to be a part of the reopening phase is just a period where we're just trying to get our materials back before we do really probably anything else is just having that period of, of trying to get them back and get our process going for what we're going to do with the materials. And well, we just to touch on that, I'm sorry, Aaron, just to touch on that, um, the deadlines really quick on when books are to be returned. Um, 
Emily, per our emergency resolutions, has full authorization to extend due dates on her own, and she's been extending them along with TLN. Um, I forget if that was a board email or just through the policy committee, but uh, she's extending the due dates, um, pushing it out and out and out so that no residents are carrying fines at the moment. And TLN did just extend it again throughout the stay at home order as it was just extended. Excellent. And connected to that, I feel like I want to say thank you to the staff for all the services they provided in these really challenging times. I can't believe all the library cards that Adrian has been able to generate and um, the programming and the it's been it's been great. I'm really proud of what the staff's done. So please pass that along from Absolutely. us. Here, here. Access Services was actually pretty excited to start curbside service for, uh, for everyone. I hope it sticks, honestly. I think it's a great idea. This this may be something that, that'll work out something. I'm not writing that down, Brendan. <laughs> mm. Are there um, any Great other um, questions for the policy review committee? So when the library does reopen, do you guys have all the cleaning supplies and you know you're you're stocked up and ready to go when whenever uh, that day comes. That, that's been tricky um i've ordered i have disposable mask ready and then i have each staff member getting two cloth masks um and then they're welcome to bring any of their own i know a lot of people have already ordered their own for grocery shopping and things um and we have we're gonna have to get back in the building and um inventory what we had because stephanie had a lot of orders come in right before we closed but she had been great about getting um, Lysol wipes, the uh, antibacterial um, hand sanitizer. I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, gloves too. It's been a big issue. That's that's one of the trickiest things to get a hold of. And I just placed an order with Amazon for 4,000 gloves. And it said it's going to arrive on May 4th. We'll see. <laughs> um, but I have it coming to my house. So hopefully it arrives on time because that was kind of a big question mark. It, is, it seems like gloves are the hardest thing to get to get a hold of. What's good too is the CDC has expanded the um, list of cleaning products that will work to kill COVID. I was surprised. There's just hundreds of them on there and things as simple as dish soap. So, you know, whereas before there's this big panic to get the Lysol wipes, I'm glad to see that we have more options than just Lysol wipes at this point. So, and I'll add too, Aaron, um, we had a discussion at the committee level that um, we think the best approach is to follow the county health department guidelines along with CDC recommendations. Like we're not gonna make any new policies that don't exist from a higher level. None of us are experts in this, right? Thank you. And we also plan to get the building professionally cleaned before reopening too. Emily, I know it says in here that you'll determine with TLN kind of when services start again, but will you give people a window once you're back in the building and able to accept materials like, hey, your stuff's due in two weeks now, or how are you going to Definitely. do that? We'll be like, you know, all of a sudden we're open, you better get those materials back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew you wouldn't do that, but I wonder yeah. how you would go about that. Yeah, definitely. We're going to work with people too. I mean, this has been such a wild situation that we're... We're, we're not looking to penalize anybody <laughs> during these right, times. So. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing is we just, you know, we want the materials back eventually, but we want it done safely. So right. we'll be helpful. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for policy review? Thanks for your work on this. In conjunction with staff, I really appreciated that staff from each department joined and you guys are doing that so collaboratively. So I appreciate that. Hey, Stacey, so uh, I, I yeah. feel like there's some some form of recommendations in here. Should we formally accept, um, move to accept the policy review report? Um, I feel like our emergency order really empowered our, empowered our director to make a lot of okay. decisions. And I feel like the process that's being used really in, involves and informs the board. So at this point, I don't think it's necessary. And that's, uh, there's a board member that feels strongly about it. We can discuss that. Okay, um, next, DDA, I'm pretty sure the reason we're gonna talk about DDA is to talk about park design, which is yeah. later. Do you want to give a DDA overview or do you wanna to wait till we're talking about park design? Um, yeah, cause there was actually, you know, the things that were most relevant was definitely the, the park design, um, but also the $2 million of relief funding that they're doing 
um, it we really wouldn't qualify for. That's it seems to be going towards small businesses. So. Okay. Um, Are there larger businesses in the DDA receiving uh, funding? Do you know, or did she, they, they did they someone tell you this? I don't know. They went through a list of um, who they expected to benefit from it, and I noticed like they did say police. They did a, they did other they said not just businesses organizations too but then they named them off and the library wasn't included in that so maybe it was just uh oversight but is that something that had to be applied for you would have to apply but um from what i understand the application is really just they're just going to be looking at small businesses for it so is it worth it Emily to apply? And I had a... i mean maybe you just hadn't thought of it is it worth it to apply Melanie, wasn't this discussed at the uh, city commission meeting last night? Uh, yes, yes and no. I think what you're mostly thinking about is we talked about the money that the city is getting, which is separate from the DDA's money. So the DDA money, we did talk about this. The DDA money is, the DDA is pushing money towards small businesses. The city itself also has money that it can, it can distribute um, from the federal government, from the CARES Act. So... I think it's worth thinking about if we should apply to one or the other. Although at the same time, like the library is actually in good shape. So, uh, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to be overly confident saying, no, oh, no, we don't need any money. Like everybody needs money right now, but I don't know. I think it's to be considered. I'm curious if other, what other people think. And then. Um, so Emily and I started, I had this conversation with Emily a little bit ago. Um, uh, when I first saw that DDA agenda item, and um, just my thought is we're both a DDA member and a contributor to the DDA tax base. Um, so I think that people inside the library do well for all of downtown. Um, they go to coffee shops uh, because uh, we don't have one yet. Um, they go, you know, the library's not always the one to stop. Um, I, I think that there's definitely some uh, synergy that can be used there. Um, and, uh, you know, Melanie, just really quick, we have unprecedented levels of PPE spending this year. So yeah, while we are in a good spot, um, that's at the moment, and it's with huge, you know, uh, significant reductions to core services because we're buying masks and gloves and cleaning products. So um, if there is relief available, um, I think we should at least be part of the conversation. Emily, is that something you're able to look into? I had reached out to Sean Cameron from the DDA about um, whether any, this was early on before you know I knew what their application process was like and um, just to see if the library would be included in any sort of relief and I never received a response, so. <laughs> I don't know if I should try again or. Yeah, just, I'm just know. wondering if there's some sort of formal application. Seems like there'd be a formal yeah. application process. It'd be worth it to yeah. find out. And then also, um, it's exploring money through the act with the city with what kind of eligibility there'd be, if any. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, about the city commission uh, liaisons. Have you been attending online the meetings, um, Emily? Have yes, you I had have. any reason to? Yeah, okay. Is there anything? All six hours, Emily? I sat through all six hours. Oh, it was, yeah. <laughs> we were. Wow. <laughs> wow. Is there anything pertin pertinent to the library that you'd like to share with I the group? Did, they did mention the phase two of the park design. So that was really, that and any sort of relief funding. Yeah, I didn't hear the library brought up at all, but that was what I was listening closely to. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, are you planning to, um, well, May 11th would still be a um, virtual meeting. Are you planning to continue to keep up with those or? So maybe if somebody, I can always watch the video of it. <laughs> if that's okay, that's I don't know if I'll be attending live. That's true, okay. All right, I think we're gonna move into action items now. Um, we have two uh, of them. One, oh, yes. I'm sorry, I was having problems. I mean, uh, there will be budget meetings this month, so I'm sure right. Emily will have to participate in those. Yes. Is the yeah. schedule out for the Emily? Do you know when 
you go usually the I'm not sure how it's working this time yeah. around, but usually meet with the um Yeah. Um I don't think I actually got my date yet. I'm gonna look back on that yeah. because I had put in for what dates I wanted before we closed. And I don't believe I actually have my official date yet. So Okay. I'm gonna look into it. It's usually that. in May, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. May. Okay. There's there's three um, dates set in May already, but Emily's only has to has to appear for us on one on the one that the library's discussed. Okay. Usually there's a meeting though before, I thought, with the city manager. I is that those right? happened. Those already happened, right? Yeah, we can't oh, have those are it, so. okay. All right. <laughs> those are done. Excellent. Okay, so we're gonna move into the first action item, which is the approval of the budget. I'm gonna let Carla lead us through this portion as our illustrious budget committee chair, who's done such a great job. There are two hey, documents in the uh in your packet. One has the proposed budget, which is towards the back. It, and it's labeled action item A. Um, and then early on, there's the um, a summary of the changes. So I'm gonna read through the summary of the changes. Um, maybe you wanna look at the budget as I go, the proposed budget. Um, so I'm not going to go through all the line items. That's what the budget committee is for. Um, but the the notable changes, um, our big revenue line is from property taxes. And um, that is the it's projected to increase, not because they they, they don't make projections based on we heard this today. Um, they don't make projections based on what they're really predicting based on the economy. They just look at a standard two and a half percent increase each year um, because on average, that's what happens. Um, so that is what is included in this. Um, we, the budget committee um, assumed that um, library service charges and fines would be decreased this year based on um, the idea that fewer people, people, fewer people might be in the library checking out physical books and eBooks don't have late fines. So, um, and then also there'll be some forgiveness that will happen. So um, we pretty much cut that in half. We reduced it um, 17,000 down to 15,000. I think it was 32 originally this year. So, um, and then library replacement material fees, we about cut that in half also for similar reasons. Um, so that's all of the real big changes from the revenue side, the expenses side, um, the um, included in the um, staffing costs were um, there was a slight raise for hourly staff and I don't remember what that was does it Brandon do you remember or Mark or Stacy uh, one and a half for two percent I believe it was going to be yeah initially a two percent and then after January 1st a one percent okay so it did include a raise for the hourly employees. Um, and then well, the hourly yeah. employees is a 50 cent raise. 50 cent? Yeah, yeah, the full time oh. gets the 3%. Okay. Um, I thought then, that the full, the full time though, that gets bargained in their contract. I thought we were talking about. Yeah, that, and that should be factored into that. Yeah. The raise we have control over is the hourly employees and the library director. That's it. Everything else is bargained. Well, I guess technically the full time are also hourly, aren't they? Stacy? So we're really talking about the part time hourly yes. employees. Yes. Part time hourly employees. Yes. Okay. <laughs> can, can we take a, a slight break? I need to run. My dog has locked himself in the bathroom and I'm the only one here. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Okay. That's amazing. A dog. Did she just say her dog locked itself in the bathroom? 
I mean, it's a big dog, right? So I, I can see. I want. I have more questions than answers right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then if you skip down to office supplies. We're just going to let that go. We're not going to discuss what just happened. <laughs> We're just going to keep going. Ready to decide. All right. Office supplies. Do you guys all see where it is or do you need me to read off the numbers? All right. Um, we increased that from last from this past year. Um, Emily had requested an increase since um, I think a lot of the expenses were getting filed into two different categories. And so it makes sense to put it all into this one. So it's just kind of an increase on paper, but not in reality. Um, if you go down to office equipment, furniture, um, we had had it higher, I believe, because we were thinking we might be making some purchases possibly prior to a renovation. And um, we've, we expect that we would hold off on all of that. Um, so we reduced it down to $2,000, pretty much in case something breaks and we really need to replace it. Um, computer supplies and parts. Um, there's no major upgrades that are known that are needed. So in, um, it's been lowered down to $20,000. The uh, cleaning and janitorial supplies is normally at $3,000 and we have increased it to $15,000. It, it's a huge increase. Um, we really just don't know what we're going to need and how much it will cost, but we assume that we will need to be doing a lot more than what we have done. Um, that will, what, so that is not um, our cleaning service that we hire out. Um, that would be um, supplies that staff uses. Um, so um, it could possibly be um, masks and gloves and, um, you know, so um, it's a big increase and we don't really know if that's appropriate or if it, we would need more and it will be, we will revisit it as the year goes on. Um, obviously we have to do what we have to do. So um, electrical light and lighting supplies. Um, we have increased that um, because of the research that's been done about um, with DTE um, and the planning with the renovation project um, we looked into, or Emily looked into, um, what we can do to improve the lighting situations around the library. And there are a lot of grants available, so it's actually minimal amount of investment. And um, we were going to do it separately, separate, separate from the big project. And we figured we could probably do it now. Um, so it includes some extra to be able to make those important upgrades on our lighting. And there were two things about that. One was it, it increased the lumens in the areas, particularly we were thinking of the first, the bottom level that can be so dark. And it's also more energy efficient because they're LED lights. So there's also long-term savings in the... Yeah. We, you recoup on some of them, the cost was really fast. Very quickly. It's like three like, years. Three yeah. years you recoup the cost. So we were, that was a- Might as well yes. do it. <laughs> um, programming supplies and related expenses. Uh, we had a discussion on this um, that um, Emily assumed that we'll have fewer large programs um, because probably we won't have a lot of groups meeting, but we also, um, discussed that um, there are revenue or the programming that friends will be able to fund. Um, we're not sure what level that will be at. Um, so we, uh, we did increase the amount on that just because we figured we'll need some programming. And um, so we had $8,000 in there this year and we increased it to 10 for next year. Um, under library books, um, it is reduced some. Um, the there's so 
our collection is comprised of our our paper, our physical books, but then also all of our online and digital, our digital collection um, and other services and subscriptions that we, we subscribe to. And um, we reduced the library books some. Um, originally we had reduced it, um, I think by, was it 25%? Um, just based on where things were this current year. And then we, reallocated all of the money that we had taken out of that to our digital collection, assuming there would be more interest in that and need for the non-physical books um, based on because of COVID and our current situation. Um, but then we ended up with a little extra money at the end of the year um, due to the increased revenue that's projected. And so we ended up putting that into books um, there's also concern that um, when the staff gets back into the library, they will be making up for the fact that they didn't order books over a few month period. And those, uh, we don't get charged for books until they ship. So a lot of them may not ship until the, the next fiscal year. So it, it'll be a little distorted. I think this year's will be lower and then next year's might be higher. So, so anyway, that was the reasoning that went into the changes on library books. And then below that, the library electronic resources and um, library subscriptions and downloadables. Um, one more note with the um, library electronic resources, that one is shifted a bunch this year because it includes the digitization of the Tribune uh which so this last year it was and we won't be doing that again next year so so it was taking it back down to the regular the reduced amount from previous years and then we increased it up seven thousand five hundred um and then we have a new line that is for the library of things which <laughs> Um, I can't recall how much we actually discussed that in these meetings versus our budget meetings and other committee meetings. So do you guys all know what that is, what that's referring to? I think Emily's brought it up so that people can check out not just books, but other items that they would possibly want to borrow and then return. Um, and the um, we already have some of that. So like hotspots are kind of our start for our library of things. Those aren't books, but they're items that um, people would, our, our patrons are excited to be able to borrow for short periods of time and then return. Um, and so we're, especially with the current economic climate, we think that there could be a lot of interest in that. And so we have, um set aside 12,500 to really get that going and um okay and then other comments on on this budget proposed budget um the budget is balanced and does not draw from fund balance in past years um it has assumed that we have draw would draw from fund balance different amounts usually between 40 and ninety thousand dollars um and but then we still never drew from fund balance so having it be totally balanced and not drawing from fund balance um is very conservative um there's i have concern um uh, that um the revenues probably what might not increase the standard two and a half percent um, we did hear back from um, someone at the city today, um, Emily forwarded that on, and th they will likely be revisiting um, at the end of the summer and make budget adjustments based on um, what type of revenues actually come in and what they see. So we'll be able to revisit all of it at that point and make adjustments as needed. Um, it makes, makes me comfortable feel better knowing that we don't have to wait a whole year and see how it turns out that they will be revisiting it um, at, at the end of the summer and we can adjust as needed. 
Um, also, um, oh, I already mentioned about the um, hourly, part-time hourly employees. Um, we also did not include the um, renovation project. So if the board decides that it's, you know, we're in a good shape and we want to move forward, um, the budget committee felt that we could at that point um, put forward uh, something, you know, an amendment and a, an adjustment amendment to, uh, to, for that plan. So it is not currently included in this. It is not making any sort of comments on if we should be doing it or shouldn't be doing it. It's just not included in this proposed budget. Questions? Thank you, Carla. Let's uh, start with questions. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, so for the office or for the computer supplies and parts, um, worst case scenario, we have to go through this in the fall again. Do we have the funds to supply the staff with the computers that they might need? Say we have to go and shelter in place for another month or two in the fall. Um, I would think so. Um, just thinking of key staff that would definitely need to be on a computer. I think that just our mobile lab alone may cover that with the eight laptops that we already have. Um, I think the computer budget as is does leave room too for something that we were already talking about, which is supplying laptops so that the public can use them, especially as they may not feel comfortable going into the computer lab right away. So having laptops available. Um, what's good about this computer budget is that we've now, we've got the public side done and we got the staff side done. So fingers crossed, we don't need to do any major upgrades or improvements anytime soon. So I'm hoping that what you see there will be kind of flexible spending for technology. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? Uh, Brandon, committee member Brandon. Look, I, I want to make a, a quick comment um, and it's about the renovation. Um, I'm sad to not see it in this budget. Uh, we've all worked extremely hard on it. We, um, the public input was great. We had a lot of good ideas. Uh, we came up with a lot of changes. I think the public value of that project would have been great. Um, but I completely understand why it's prudent to leave it off the budget now. Um, and I look forward to seeing uh, what revenue figures looking like for next year, for the end of this year, and then into next year, and possibly completing this. Um, you know, we're not spending the money. We're not. The money isn't. It's still just in our. Uh, it's locked away, waiting to be used. So I look forward to potentially using that in the future. Yes. Also, I don't know if the email. I feel like it. It was just sent maybe to committee members, but could you maybe Emily just talk a little bit about your communication with Kyle from library design and your How the projects not we're not saying no to the project it's sort of on hold and where they are with that. Yeah, I reached out to Kyle and he completely understood our situation and um, he said that he could go ahead still and um, put like a mock bid together for us so so that we would have that ready in case there does come a time in the hopefully near future when we would be able to move ahead with it. Um, we're, we're still in contact with Kyle because he's working on getting plexiglass shields for us and the social distancing stickers, the decals for the floor. So we're not done with library design yet. But um, no, the, the way it's left is that um, we're definitely keeping everything open with him and he's going to finish out his service with us on um, what, what his contract called for as far as um, still, you know, taking the measurements and um, looking through and getting us specs on everything so that we have something in place too. If fortune so, changes, I'm able to do it. So Stacey, yeah, as a facility committee member now, um, we actually had a conversation about this and we have a, um, it's actually on me right now to get a list of uh, proposed changes to our last set of plans um, that Kyle needs to answer. So we're still moving forward. We've uh, we've paid for these designs. So at the very least, we're going to know how cool we want the library to look. OK, questions from board member. Actually, uh, I feel like we should, uh, I should ask for a motion, and then we can discuss it. 
that way. Move adoption. Okay, there's a uh, mark move to adopt the proposed budget. Rax Second from Roxanne. Okay, discussion. My only comment is I think this was one of the best laid out budgets in terms of making it so understandable of what the changes are and why. So thank you to the budget committee. I also would say, I think a lot of the things that you reflected in your report are all really logical things based on where we are right now with COVID and things like that. So I just kudos on that too. That was a really hard meeting when we, I don't know about for you guys, but for me, I feel like I was like spent the next day. We had a Zoom meeting after this all hit and we were like, we got to take it out. I mean, it was a hard meeting. It was but, early April too, right? So it's in the middle of the, Yeah. I think it was like the worst week for the pandemic too. And we're trying to yeah. decide the future of spending. That was a really rough week to think about a library budget. Um, so, and it did feel good today to get that email from the city about revisiting in August. I agree with you, Carla, that we're not waiting a whole year and seeing what's gonna happen next. So maybe in August we can revisit this topic and maybe it's not as bad as we think. We don't know though, that was the whole point. We don't know. Other questions or comments about the proposed budget? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll vote. All in favor of approving the proposed budget, say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, the budget carries unanimously. Thanks, thank Carla. Thank you, Carla, for your leadership on that committee. Uh, and thank uh, you to the committee members and to Emily for all your hard work. Brandon's the one Emily, this is your first complete it. budget, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's you awesome. You did it, Emily. <laughs> During a global pandemic, we pulled the budget together. All right. Um, yeah, and thank you to Brandon. He is the king of spreadsheets, you guys. If you need a spreadsheet whipped <laughs> up, Brandon's your dude. He'll keep you all organized. It's great. Okay. Um, next, we have the directory evaluation. This, um, our last um, meeting that wasn't an emergency meeting was in February. If you'll recall, we, um, the committee reported back. We all agreed. We, after reviewing the, um, the evaluation, then we wanted to give Emily a raise, but then, and we even had a motion to give her a raise, which got tabled because we realized there were some questions about um, our ability, like from the city's point of view, what we were able to do and not do. And Roxanne agreed to go back to the city and get some answers to those questions, which she did. And she um, sent a very thorough report. Thank you for your very yeah. thorough, and it's been documented now. We can go back to it later with next year when we can't remember what the answer is. It's in our record. So I'm going to hand this part over to Roxanne to sort of give us a little update about what you learned high level from the city. And then um, I would entertain any, any kind of motion as well from the committee. Okay. Well, it turns out that it's not as difficult as it kind of sounded initially, as a matter of fact, when I explored it, basically the process for doing a raise greater than the city norm, which is approximately two and a half percent. I've detailed it more in the report. It's pretty, it's the same procedure as simply um, what we do with any recommendation. We put the recommendation in, we support it, it goes to HR, and the extra step in this is it goes to the head of HR and the city manager, and they look at it. And if there is good reason, there's usually not a problem to do a higher raise. Um, just a thing I didn't put in the report is I looked at raises outside of the government sector because governments are so restricted and they are pretty much, you know, two to three percent, very little variation at most levels. And I did look at private sector to get something to compare it to. And basically, three to five, six percent is like considered an excellent raise. So after looking at everything, going over the evaluations again, um, 
hearing a little bit from other sources that also gave very positive recommendations that make me think that this is possible. Um, I'm gonna recommend that we give Ms. Dumas a 5% raise increase. I don't recommend going beyond that because that is already double what most employees get, but I think she has handled, and it's stated in the draft on the second page, um, so many challenges, and this was of course before our current challenge, that it is certainly deserving because when you read all the comments from the staff and others, she's gone well above and beyond and made improvements that are known not just to the library, but people outside of the library have commented. Okay, so uh, the motion is to offer a 5% raise with our second. From Melanie, look at her raising her hand real fast. Melanie Macy seconds that. Let's have a discussion. Um, I would just say I appreciate all your extra research, Roxanne, and you have me convinced. <laughs> Other discussion? All question. Okay. Uh, all in favor of a 5% raise for our director? Say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Okay. One little follow up, if I might, and this is Stacy. Um, I actually have the form already. I will share it with you. And then I believe that you are the one who is supposed to sign it. Yes, I remember that form from February. And I'm like, well, I guess we should wait on this form. Yes. So, so you'll send it to me. Do I send it to Dennis in HR? Um, or just to, I'll give you Jennifer's email and you can send it to Jennifer and then forward probably the hard copy too. Okay, so you'll email that. Can fill you in on that. So okay, so I Thank didn't you. unmute in time because I was typing. So so I just want to say that I said I too. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> um, this is retroactive uh, to it's uh, retroactive to your higher date. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. Congratulations, Emily. Yeah. Thank you so much. We we appreciate you. And so does your staff. As yeah indicated in your evaluation and also in this director's report if you know during a pandemic crisis you're getting rave reviews as a leader so we appreciate that as well yeah okay i want to say my staff has done amazing too i don't know i wish i had said that during my director's report section but the staff has just done such a remarkable job throughout all this so that's great we're lucky Okay, uh, discussion items, we have three. The first is adding LinkedIn Learning, um, and I'm gonna let Emily lead this one. So um, evaluating where our budget stands right now, obviously we had to put a hold on our book ordering. Um, we were left with a lot in our computer budget, our furniture budget, our miscellaneous operating services budget, our contracted services. Um, so I've been looking at what would be of the most value for our patrons at this point in time has been how I've been evaluating what to add at this point. So, you know, I started with increasing the hoopless checkout, increasing canopy. Um, we're adding a new downloadable service for checkout, um, you know, adding the New York Times. And one thing that myself and the staff have gotten a lot of use out of is LinkedIn Learning. So it's actually, it's kind of confusing because it's formerly lynda.com is what was the library version of this and then LinkedIn acquired them. So now the library model is called LinkedIn Learning, but then they do LinkedIn Learning slash Linda. What it is, is it's um, 14,500 on-demand courses. They're taught by business professionals. They cover a variety of topics and skills, um, uh, whether they're business skills, interview skills, um, different factions of business, creativity. They, they have um, video tutorials and they follow like a classroom format and you can actually get a certificate at the end of it. Why we started doing it is um, I've, working from home. Um, part of our work from home has been to make sure we're still developing professionally and I've been referring staff to different webinars. And yet I, I looked into this because I was like, this is a nice change of pace from our normal library webinars and, and other things that we were attending. 
um, is that it covered topics that we normally may not have access to just focusing on library topics, like um, things like our social media. That was a wonderful session I did. I learned so much in it. And I was just thinking what a great service this was. And then talking to some of the staff members who work at other libraries who have subscribed to Linda, they all reiterated that they said Linda is completely worth it. They said their patrons love it and um, that they were using it themselves professionally. I also started thinking how many employers do have employees working from home and are looking for a way for them to also continue their professional development and um, uh, to continue learning while they're home and have a way to show it because an uh, employer can check in on their progress too and they can show proof that they did finish the course. Um, so the LinkedIn learning, um, you know, using it personally, I was on the free trial and then it's $30 a month after that. And that's pretty, that's prohibitively expensive for a lot of people, especially as we're heading into probably a pretty bad recession. So I was thinking that I think this would be a service that would be of great value to many patrons, especially because it does have a lot, uh, it covers a lot of job hunting interviews, resume building, cover, le cover letter building, um, employment resources that unfortunately a lot of people may need in the next, in the coming months and even year. So that is why I wanted the library board. I wanted to ask for a consideration for this because it is a rather large expense. It would be $13,125 for an annual, um, an annual subscription that our patrons could then use with their library card. So it would require a purchase order and um, I just wanted to present that to the board as an option for an additional service. So right now it's a discussion item. However, if a board member wanted to make a motion, it could be turned into an action item. Um, just so we're all on the same page there. I'll, Catherine, did you have something? I'll, no, I was just gonna move. <laughs> okay, so you I move, move that we approve the purchase of LinkedIn Learning, Linda. Okay. And is there a second? Aaron, second. Discussion. I just think for all the reasons, even before you said them, Emily, I just think this would be a really worthwhile resource for people for, like I said, I don't need to reiterate it, but for everything going on right now, I think this is a great, a great resource. I agree. I love this opportunity that it creates for all of our patrons. Um, no matter who's coming in the library or staying from home. I think it's such an awesome service that we can provide for people. Um, as someone on the budget committee, I just have a few comments about it. Um, I think that there's a lot of potential for it to be a fabulous service, um, but it is a lot of money. Um, I th think there's money in our budget to do it right now, but uh, um, our budget that we just approved for next year does not include that. Um, so um, I think uh, we could approve it for the one year this year, but before we would make another, uh, you know, do another year of it, we would need to revisit and see if it was actually worth the money that we're spending on it since the budget we just approved does not include it. So does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Brandon. Um, Emily, so kind of piggybacking on that, what line item were you going to take these funds out of? Well, you know, I was looking through, we still have, um, and this is with the rest of the Tribune expenses, there's still 7,000 in databases. We have 10,000 left in computers and we have 10,000 left in furniture. So I was thinking about adjusting the budget to, um, to move the funds into the electronic resources line item. If if you got to the end of this year, are there yeah. are there any electronic resources? So let's say your usage reports on this go huge. Are there would could you see doing prioritization where maybe some lesser used ones? I I just I'm just thinking of what Carla's saying and in, in yeah. ensuring that we have it paid for going forward. Well, you know, we have, we subscribe right now to Gale courses. And a question I thought people might have, if you ever use Gale courses would be, what would be the difference? Because they're also online courses. What the difference is, is I actually feel like um, they complement each other well, because Gale courses operates like a real classroom where you report to it. So you have to sign up for, for the courses and then you do have to wait until they, they are in session. 
Um, so they treat it like an actual, like, you know, um, real time learning experience where you report to it. And um, yeah, I believe they have coursework involved with it. It doesn't cover as many topics either. And I also think that um, it doesn't have the LinkedIn name, which I do think goes a long way with people. Everybody recognizes LinkedIn. So my initial um, response would be maybe it would be a trade off between Yale courses and LinkedIn um, going forward. And um, I think too, just really, I think it's a time to take a good long hard look at our databases and what's actually getting used and what isn't and evaluate from there. Um, because I do feel, and it could also be a question of, um, I think we we are definitely trying to promote our databases more, but um, you know, and, and what I kind of like about this period is we're trying so many different things. And um, at the end of this, then I think what we'll go through and see what worked and what didn't work, and then maybe evaluate going forward for the next budget season, what would stay and what would go. Okay, thanks. Erin. Going off what Carla said too, this could be a really great marketing opportunity just to reach out to the community and say during this time, we've um, installed this new service that you can have access to and we can really promote it as it's it's something that it's a limited time only it's during this time to help our patrons get through it so it could be a really good marketing opportunity and we're acknowledging right from the get-go it, it's possible it's a limited time thing um, and if the community gets involved and uses it then we'll consider expanding the service or continuing the service Emily, is this something that would be available to only Royal Oak card holders? Yes. How does that work? Okay. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm assuming it's available remotely. It's a stupid question, but I remember some of the databases were only available in the library. I just want to make sure that yeah. you don't have to be in the library to access it. Yeah, yeah. Ancestry, and what's nice is TLN has expanded Ancestry for remote access, but normally our Ancestry is only available in the library. And that's actually something that when that period is up, so many people have gotten used to using it at home that I'd love to look into whether it's an option to. The yeah. data on Ancestry and the usage yeah. reports and this yeah. board packet were amazing. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, did that no. completely coincide with it being available at home? Yes. Is that the first time it was available at home? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion about this motion? Brandon. Um, so just, uh, and I apologize if it was said when Henry was jumping around on me. Um, Emily, the, the 13,000 some dollars, is that a one-time fee no matter how many people use it? Or does that limit us to you know five thousand hits or what's what's the fee structure? I believe it's just a one time fee. Mm -hmm. I just heard that's um our consortium price too. So I just reached out to our consortium um, organizer of digital services and now if we were to approve this tonight, um, it would have to go before the city commission because of its pricing. Do you have to have a, does that go as a budget amendment? to the city commission and do you have to identify where the funds are coming from then? Or can we play around with where the funds are coming from between now and then? I believe that would just be an adjustment. I had to do, I think it would be a purchase order that would go in front of the city commission. And then um, I think though that it would just be an adjustment for us since we're not moving anything from fund balance. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cause I, I just, I think there's maybe some conversation that can be had um, offline, maybe committee level, just discuss like where the funds are actually coming from to, uh, to pay for this. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Aaron. Are, um, do the patrons get unlimited use? They can take as many courses as they want. Yeah. Okay. It is when you think about the cost, you know, how many, how many patrons do we want to see using it to justify that price tag, it really, we would really have to market it and make sure it's out there. Everybody knows about it and takes advantage of it. Absolutely. I think tying it into with the fact that um, Royal Oak employees and not just the city of Royal Oak, anybody who's employed at a Royal Oak business can get a library card might be a nice tie in. Sounds like something the DDA would appreciate. There you go. <laughs> I forgot about the employer aspect and how we can really, uh, appeal to employers with this platform. Oh, it's a is huge it something that's thing. only for adults? Are there any program, is there any classes that'd be appropriate for younger? Um, maybe for first time job seekers. I don't, I don't think real little kids on there. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen anything. What about high schoolers? Yeah, I would say um, 
high schoolers, so you know, who are starting their, their business high school classes, I'm sure they find relevant material on there or who are applying for a first job. All right, any other discussion? Melanie. Trying to add on to what you just said um, about the high schoolers. So Emily, maybe we should tell the high school about it. Like maybe that could be one of our outreach modes is to get to the high school and say, hey, we have this um, job preparation stuff for students. Yeah. I really wanna ramp up to our business resources that we have available for people and um, really advertise it as a package because we do have a lot. And I think just getting the word out about all of the different resources they can draw on from the library will will be a, a good move in the next couple months. Okay, let's vote. Uh, all in favor of purchasing LinkedIn Learning, say aye. 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 All opposed. Okay, this motion carries unanimously. Did you have a question, Melanie? No. I, I couldn't remember who, who, who first and second it, but I have it. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, the next discussion item, um, it's reopening considerations. Is this uh, something that's different than what was in the facilities committee or? I think it was probably, I don't know if it was more Emily or Brandon. I, I, I didn't put this on the agenda. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. yeah, Emily. <laughs> so really just kind of to update the board and where we stand. Um, like I said, I've ordered the mask. I should have those arriving. I've ordered gloves. Um, we are looking at what will probably be um, a four phase plan with getting the staff in the building, starting curbside pickup. Um, doing a limited opening to the public, and then the fourth stage would be to um, go back to full services. Uh, any discussion about this from board members or questions? Aaron. You muted yourself. Sorry. Um, one thing I had seen was it said that views were expressed that as long as masks are required for the public, the building should not be open. Will you, will you guys revisit that idea? I'm I'm worried that that um, we might have to wear masks for a really long time. I mean, this this could go on the rest of the year that that's required for public spaces. So I thought that was a little. It was very strong language. Um, that I'm wondering if you'll reconsider. So, go ahead, Mel. Uh, I'll see to Melanie. All right, Melanie. Uh, well, I was going to say your part first. Uh, um, there were some people who felt pretty strongly about this and about the dangers, but I think one thing that came up a lot was if they're required, are we going to have someone standing at the door? Are we going to put on library monitors saying, you get out, you weren't allowed in the library, or are we going to feel that we have to provide masks for everyone? So it's kind of the balance of like, if it's required, who's enforcing it? And who are we, who are we turning away from the library? And we don't want to be turning anyone away. So does that mean we have to provide masks? So there was just some complications to it. I, also so I agree, I agree with you though. <laughs> I think we're, what we're going to have to differentiate is, um, policy versus actual law because in a meeting today the police chief said that they can't enforce by law that anybody wear a mask he said don't be calling us if anybody's not wearing a mask in your building so um but however if we made it a policy then we we could enforce it so i i guess it's just a question of how far we take it how far we enforce it and i don't have any answers for that yet yeah, and so, and Aaron, really quick, just this was a longer discussion that I it was really hard to surmise in one sentence in a report. Um, so uh, the real this real discussion ended with we're going to wait and see what actual um, policies and recommendations are from health authorities before we make any decisions like this. Um, but there is a consideration, you know, if if there is a order out there that says you have to wear a mask. How are we going to provide masks to all the public? You know, we have a high underserved population that uses the library, and they, quite frankly, um, there's people who won't be able to afford them. Um, so, how can we ensure, uh, you know, it, it's not fair to 
exclude them from a service because they don't have money for it. Um, and we also can't continue to, we couldn't provide masks all, all over. So um, yeah, a lot of cool ideas came out there. Um, Melanie pitched idea of the Commission for the Arts Project that does the scarps and the hats outside. Uh, using that railing as a point of free pickups for masks to the community. And I saw she reached out to uh, that commission already. So, you know, th there's some cool synergies there that we can use, but it's just, it's really good. It's a policy discussion. Emily. Uh, yeah, I just want to update you on that is the Sharing the Warmth um, knitting group run by Denise. She um, says that they are ready to go with the masks. They're already working on them and they'll have them out on our railing. So, Hopefully that will help with any of our underserved populations and that we wouldn't have to turn anybody away. Awesome. I have a question Emily. on that. Emily, I was I was gonna ask in the group, um, did she say anything about the language to put inside with the mask? Cause I've been doing a little bit of research about like what a little card would say, um, but I, I wasn't sure what kind of masks they would be with their cloth mask. We should probably say something like when you get this home, Put in the washing machine, then wash your hands, and then after that, you know, I had I've started to work on little instruction sheets, but if they've done that already, I don't I know if you know it, if they've gotten that that far, but yeah, I think that's definitely a good idea. Okay, I'll just I'll reach out in the group. I'm really excited because the scarf I started three years ago with that project is now face back size. So I've just <laughs> been waiting for this moment. <laughs> I've been trying to teach myself to crochet in quarantine. It's going very badly. Yeah. Okay, well, I you know. It, everything can be a washcloth is what I learned when I learned to crochet. Okay, washcloth again, I guess. I thought it was going to be a hat, but I guess not. All mine are washcloths. Knitting yeah, and crocheting. Yeah, I mean, washcloths. they're really nice washcloths. <laughs> I was going to make enough for my kitchen and I ended up buying some. <laughs> exactly. I, I run a knitting shop if anybody needs help. <laughs> nice. <what> we all <laughs> I think yeah, all of us. Okay. Uh, next discussion item is park design. Emily. Um. So yes, um, some interesting things have come up with the park. As I mentioned earlier, I just found out through that DDA meeting that the DDA, um, part of their budget was an approval of 1.5 million for phase two of the park design, which is the library, the exterior entrance of the south side of the library, um, upgrading that. So if you've seen the park designs, those show that everything's level. It's level with um, the pathway and the grass, and it has um, kind of a canopy area over it. Um, so I don't know what the time frame is for that. I, I guess what they'll be doing is, the thing is this will push it to the phase one, which I believe they're going to start either spring or summer of next year. I have some pretty big concerns about that. Um, the timing of it, I've been told by our building inspector that in a building our size, and this makes sense, we have to have two public, two exits, emergency exits open to the public. So if work's being done on this, I would assume it would close down the entrance for a period. And in that case, would we have to close the building, which I don't think any of us want to do after a, a major closure that we've just had. Um, I guess I'm, I'm just seeking guidance from the board on the best way to approach this to make sure that we are consulted, brought into the conversation. I'm really hoping to not have a repeat of what happened with our 11 mile entrance where myself and my predecessor had zero input into what happened with that. And then at the end of it, the city planner approached us with a $20,000 um, just, we're not finishing the railing, you're going to have to drop $20,000 to finish it. Surprise. <laughs> um, which actually, um, at the end of it, the DBA did end up paying for the rest of the railing, but we're heading into dire economic straits. I don't want to have a surprise $200,000, oh, you better finish this offer, it's going to look terrible, surprise coming down the pike for us. So um, there's that concern. They're also, they are working on the 60% design, which will be submitted to city commission soon. Um, I'm going to be working with the head of DPS and the park designer and um, John Federley from Parks and Rec and whoever else is on their task force. And um, I'm glad to say that the library will be included in what's happening there because um, there could be a lot of changes happening right around our building. So um, we'll obviously want to have a lot of input in that. 
So that's where things stand. Um, again, I just any input you may have on just making sure we're kept in the loop on the entrance situation would be good. I mean, yeah, um, I feel like we keep having this discussion and then we keep going back to the city and saying like, hey, don't forget the library, they need to be included. And <laughs> we're not included again. Who is it? Like who, who's the point person that is supposed to be, that is putting the, these meetings together and forgetting to contact you every time? Do, I mean, do we have a name? Do who, I don't want to like blame someone, but I do want to know who we can ask to make sure this happens. I don't know. I, I feel like there's a lot of different hands in it, so it's hard to, to name one person. Um, but um, no, I mean, it just, you know, and it's kind of broken into these parts now where, you know, there's the actual park design and then there is the entrance, which is going to be the DDA. So I think it depends too on what part we're talking about that we want. I mean, ideally, I would like to have input on all of it <laughs> that's going to impact us, but. Other questions for Emily? Um, yes, um, it's more of a, a thing. Um, the butterfly garden specifically. Um, we have out there over 60 different types of plants. Many of them are um, sought after plants. They're not easy to come by. Um, I'm looking at this point at a worst case scenario because this keeps happening that the garden disappears. Um, we need to know because if it's going to go, there are many organizations and other gardens who would probably come and take at least some of those plants. Um, there's even shrubs that are you know, a couple native shrubs and that type of thing that we've put in since I've been involved. So that's something that we also have to think about is being able to get the most sought after plants to appropriate places. So two things, one board members that maybe don't know, Roxanne is a master gardener and she has donated countless hours in that butterfly garden and kept it what it is along with some other volunteers but she's really headed up that project the other thing i want to say is um right now the goal is to keep the butterfly garden um and emily has been able to sit down with um i'm not sure what his role is aaron's role she's the department head for dps department head for dps she's been able to sit down and um update him and there weren't things you know he came in and there weren't things that he knew and she was able to update him so and Aaron has promised to um, keep Emily in the loop on this. And I want to also thank Emily for doing her due diligence constantly on this and making sure to try to get invited to these meetings where decisions are being made. And um, anything that we can do to help with that, we're happy to do it. Um, so... I just want to add that I first, you know, this first became a discussion topic um, a couple days ago. Um, <clears throat> and when it first came about, it was pretty dire. It's like, oh my God, where is the butterfly garden going? Why is there a children's playscape on it? What is going on with this big addition to the side of a building that, while awesome, you should probably should have some input to, um, you know, the, the, yeah, everything is falling apart. Um, and then a couple conversations, it sounds like with Aaron really helped settle some of that out. Um, and on top of that, Aaron was part of our facilities committee meeting, um, earlier this month. And for the first time, you know, he committed to having DPS workers actually clean the grates on the roof that, uh, are causing leaves to build up and water not to, uh, um, uh, it's causing the water to collect. So, you know, th this is stuff we've been working on. I mean, we've been trying to work on with DPS for years. years. Um, and Aaron That's seems year. to be literally years. Yeah. Um, so Aaron seems to really be on board with, you know, having a partnership with us. So I, I'm excited for that. Um, in the meantime, though, I think that we have a board member who happens to also be a city commissioner. Um, and I, I really think at this point, um, we should, while it's great that Aaron is going to work with us, Aaron is part of an entire team. We just can't have one person on that team working with us. Um, Melly, I don't know if it's appropriate for you to ask 
uh, the city uh, manager to make to ensure that his team is including our team, or if we by resolution should write a letter to the city manager asking that. Um, I just feel like we need to make sure that we have 100%, like we're all working together because I mean, it is, I mean, the, the fact that the DA is spending that money and doing this in phase one is great for us. It's great for our patrons. Um, Emily, I don't think that uh, just, you know, ha having worked in the construction industry, they, they, they find ways to make sure egress has happened, right? If they, they don't shut down buildings, they build temporary, really weird looking janky structures, but you can legally get through them to get out in case of emergency. So I'm not worried about us shutting down, um, but I just want to make sure that, you know, this, this amazing exterior patio um, fits the needs of us along with the needs of the park. Oh, just going to quickly reply that I, I have, I have, that's part of what I was asking is who, who to ask because I've talked to several people and it seems to be ineffective. So I must be talking to the wrong person, but we do have a city, new city manager on route. Um, I can tell you that um, I know who brought it to the, the meeting um, where it first came on my radar. It was um, Tim Twing, our city planner was when he said, you know, when I said, well, what's this about? He said that he had just been kind of a liaison for the economic side of it. I'm just getting the funding for it. So that he indicated that it's really going to be the DDA. Um, and I don't know if they have a separate committee for this, who will be determining the design of it. I was also concerned when I read, um, and one of the things that showed that the electrical boxes could be there, and that completely goes against the renovation plans we had that hopefully we'll still carry out in the near future. We need to know if they're going to put big, ugly electrical boxes right in front of our beautiful windows. Yeah, that's a big deal. And you know, one thing I think that that leads to a good point, I think we need to decide on what we're absolutely not okay with um so that i i can communicate this to them because yeah like i mean this a lot of these will impact our actual operations we're if we're basing the renovation around those picturesque windows and then when they look out on electrical boxes we have butterflies on our library cards we build our identities around butterflies we need the butterfly garden so is i think i think that um you know just having those kind of deal breakers where we say okay the butterfly garden does need to stay there that's really important to us and a lot of stakeholders in the community too. I mean, it's also a monarch way station, um, mm -hmm. a habitat for pollinators. So there's a whole other environmental side to keeping the butterfly garden. That's important to know as well. Um, so I think that it's appropriate that the facilities committee probably take the lead on um, meeting and discussing this on a more regular basis. Uh, then th that's a little bit more nimble than a board meeting to discuss some possible changes that might happen. That makes a lot of sense to me. Okay. Um, with that, uh, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. How is it that the meeting where we're all in our homes digitally is one of the shortest ones we've had? I don't know, they say everything takes longer online. We it's did a good job. <laughs> There's no one stopping us. <laughs> right? Uh, anyone have a motion? I move to adjourn. Is there a second? That was Roxanne. I don't know if you saw. Carla second. Carla seconds. Discussion? Can I have a quick discussion on the motion to adjourn? Um, as we're, I, really fast, I promise. As we're motion oh, to adjourn, Emily, maybe the next time we have this meeting, we're going to be some people in a physical building, some people not. Maybe Ed can start looking at technology so that board meetings are going to be um, whatever room we're in, we have the ability to digitally include other members. Unlike last time where we were trying to use cell phones to have two members listen to what's going on. Good point. We can have that conversation offline. Yep, forgot to mention it. All before. in favor of adjourning. Aye. 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 All opposed. That motion carries unanimously. All right. Hey, thank you That's to uh, Carol in the city commission uh, chambers for making this happen today. And WROK for live streaming it. Oh, my kids are now yeah. showing up. Yeah. Look at these people <laughs> trying to come through the painting. Right the out of the murals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're most welcome and that was a really fun meeting.